Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Some Dude 267, Long Sight, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, and Benjamin Owens. You are the reason why this content remains unexploded. And today, we are going to get back to a bit of a more basic topic. I know I've diverged to a lot of other rail history related things lately, but I decided to get back to basics with this one and talk about just one instance of, yes, yet another steam explosion. And in fact, it is quite likely the last steam explosion that was suffered by the Pennsylvania Railroad. This is the story of the steam explosion of PRR 520. Pennsylvania Railroad 520 is a 282 Mikado type steam locomotive. Which we've talked about before, Mikados were an extremely prevalent type of locomotive, constructed mainly in the early 20th century. And more specifically, 520 is a member of the L1S class. The L1Ss were constructed between 1914 and 1919, mostly by the railroad's own Juniata shops, but some were also constructed by Baldwin. 520 was actually one of those, and a few more were constructed by Lima. 574 of these locomotives were produced, and for their time, they were actually extremely good, easily one of the best out of all Mikados ever produced. And even though they were very successful, it turned out that Pennsylvania Railroad wound up not having that much use for them, at least not at first. Only two years after the L1Ss were created, the Penzi also created the I1Ss, which were 2100 decapods. These locomotives were a bit larger and had better tractive effort to deal with the railroad's mountain grades and heavy coal trains. Then in 1923, the M1482 Mountains came into being and they took over high speed freight runs. So the L1Ss were eclipsed pretty early on and a significant chunk of them remained in storage throughout the Great Depression, but they were put back into service for World War II. As we've been over many, many, many times before, World War II was very much an all-hands-on-deck for pretty much every industry under the sun, and the railroads were one of the major players in that department. Goods needed to get moved around, and not just munitions and supplies for the war effort, food, materials, everything you could possibly imagine had to get moved around as quickly as possible, and the railroads were the best way to do it back then. The L1S has put in a substantial amount of work in this department, and 520 was no exception. But, she was the one to suffer a bit of a cataclysmic major itsy-bitsy. Those words shouldn't string together. It was a problem. It was a bad day. It was November 14th, 1942. And 520 was pulling a freight train from Altoona, Pennsylvania to Conway, Pennsylvania. She had a four-man crew on board. The engineer, the fireman, a brakeman, as well as a conductor. However, something went wrong. As she was passing near Crescent, PA, her boiler suffered a cataclysmic explosion. The blast hurled bits of metal and red-hot embers all over the place. It had been so powerful that the tender and six of the tank cars behind 520 derailed as a result of it. There was also a house nearby, the windows of which had been shattered by the blast. Two occupants inside the home had been burned by scalding water, and coal embers that had flown through their broken windows had managed to set a rug on fire on top of everything else. Out of the four-man crew, two managed to survive. The fireman and the conductor actually managed to get away with their lives, though they were badly injured. The engineer and the brakeman weren't so lucky. They would die in the blast. And in case any of you are wondering, and I'm sure plenty of you have guessed by now, what caused 520 to explode, History in the Dark? Please tell us. It was the crown sheet. What did you think it was? What did you really think it was? Every single time we talk about something in the 20th century when it comes to steam explosions, it's the stupid crown sheet. You knew that, I knew that, but yes, they let the water get too low. When they put water back in, the crown sheet was too hot. The metal caused the water to immediately flash over to steam, which increased the pressure too quickly, and the boiler exploded. Again, keep water in your steam locomotives. As for 520, well, she actually wound up being repaired. See, this has come up a lot when I've talked about steam explosions. Some people wonder why a lot of these locomotives seem to be getting repaired all the time. The reason is actually very simple. It's actually not that difficult to replace a boiler if that's the only major component of a steam locomotive that winds up damaged. The expensive bits of a locomotive are, well, below the boiler, and the wheels and the pistons and all that mechanical madness. But if it's just the boiler, 
it's actually not that hard to replace it. And that's exactly what they did. 520 returned to service not long after the incident. And I'm sure more than a handful of you have been noticing that a lot of my pictures that I've been using of 520 are actually extraordinarily recent. And that is very easy to explain. She's still around. 520 is the sole survivor of her class. She is the only L1S that survived in the preservation. She remained in official service until October 20th, 1957. She pulled a rail fan special out of Baltimore, Maryland, going from Enola to Northumberland, Pennsylvania. After a round trip there, she was retired to the Pennsylvania Railroad's collection of historical locomotives, where she remained until December of 1979. That year, Pennsylvania Railroad's successor, Penn Central, wound up donating 520, as well as pretty much every other piece of the Railroad's collection of historical locomotives, to the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission, who put her on display at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, where she still sits on outdoor static display to this day. She was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1979 as well. When it comes to 520 from a personal perspective, I can actually speak from there, as I have been to that museum and have seen her, and she is quite a sight. She's a very impressive locomotive. She's not the largest ever, but not the smallest, and it's certainly impressive that she could suffer such a cataclysmic explosion and not only be rebuilt, but be the only survivor of her class to this day. My only complaint with it is that she's an outdoor display. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't stand outdoor displays with locomotives. I don't like watching these old locomotives sitting outside to rust. Now, to be fair to the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum, they do take very good care of even their outdoor displays, and I do understand they only have so much space inside. But still, it would be nice to see 520 move from her spot and place under a shelter where she can be enjoyed by museum guests for years to come. She is the only member of her class to survive, and I think she deserves it. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.